basketball tip off. And we bring you to Thompson Bowling Arena, Knoxville, Tennessee. And our matchup in the SEC tonight, the 20th ranked Wildcats of Kentucky on the road to take on the Volunteers on their home floor. And we welcome everybody, Brad Nestle along with Sean Farnham. Shannon will be along shortly. Both teams coming off disappointing losses over the weekend, Sean, in the Big 12 SEC Challenge. Tennessee let a 14-point lead slip away and lost to TCU. An overtime loss by Kentucky at Kansas, even though they played well. John Calipari said, that's not good enough. And now the tournament is only five weeks from tomorrow. Two of the guys in the backcourt tonight, I think, I would dare to say, are going to make the all-SEC team. Let's talk about it. Let me officially welcome you to the Infinity Coaches Charity Challenge. We're going to have some fun today. I want to be a race car driver. The oldest rookie race car driver in the country. You're supposed to be on the gas way earlier. I'm oh, sorry. Doing okay? We're not going to the grocery store. Wow. Wow. That's a lot of wows. Oh, yeah, he's looking real good. real good. Come on, baby! To introduce the new Infinity QX50, we could have shown it on a winding mountain pass, or somewhere even more cliche, like a downtown street. But what distinguishes the Infinity QX50 isn't where you can take it, it's how you feel taking it there. With generous cargo space, extended second row leg room, and coupe-like handling, the new QX50 from Infinity. Lease the new Infinity QX50 for $329 a month. Visit your local Infinity retailer. This is Super Tuesday, presented by Hotels.com. Part of the SEC on ESPN. The Big Ten will follow us when we're down here in Knoxville. Take a look at the starting lineups. For the Kentucky Wildcats, John Calipari, Eulis, Murray, Briscoe in the backcourt, Poitras and Willis up front. One change in the Tennessee lineup, Kyle Alexander in, Robert Hubbs not starting tonight, Hunter, Bachman, Moore, and Schofield round things off for Rick Barnes. Oh, and Alexander starting gives them their tallest player out of the floor at six foot nine. The freshman coming up with his best game of the season where he had 11 rebounds and six block shots. They feel like they've got to be able to protect the paint better, and Hubbs has been struggling. Officials, Carl Hess has got it in hand. Ron Groover and Keith Kimball join him. That's Kentucky into the front court on the opening possession. Murray, the leading scorer for Kentucky, over 17 a game. Poitras, the kick out and threw it way over the head of Ulis. Rick Barnes, his first year here in Knoxville, but his 29th season overall. And many of those years, 20-plus wins. On the other side, John Calipari, seventh year in Lexington, 12-5 and five against Tennessee. Kentucky's won the last two in this series. It dates back 116 years ago Friday. is the first time these two teams got together. No, I didn't do that game. Don't ask. <laughs> Here's a jumper on the elbow. Won't go for Bachman. The outlet to Ulis. I think the biggest key for Tennessee is they're going to have to get back and force Kentucky to play in the half-court set. They've got to take them out of their transition and then collapse on the paint. Briscoe gave up an open look. And now Eulis trying to penetrate, gets it out. Murray's going to take a three for openers. That one's off the mark. Tennessee had a hand on the rebound, but Schofield lost it out of bounds. The communication has to be better for Tennessee going after the board, but the one thing you'd like if you're Rick Barnes, is the fact there were no blue jerseys around that as far as getting an offensive rebound and put back. Fresh shot clock for Kentucky. You play the zone, and you've got to be patient against the zone, but you've got to, you can still screen and cut against it. Willis on the baseline. Rimmed out at three. Battle for the rebound. Poitras, kind of a loose ball off Schofield, and he's got the first basket of the night. 
Good job being active underneath Armani Moore has got to snatch that down if he's got it in both hands You can't allow it to get poked away Kentucky one of the better offensive rebounding teams in the country and a quick foul on Briscoe It's amazing the amount of coaches we've talked about or talked with I should say in the last two or three weeks about some of the foul calls like last week we had what 79 free throws or something like that on Super Tuesday 55 fouls 79 free throws in that Georgia LSU game right now the officials think that uh, I mean the coaches think that the officials are calling the games a little bit differently now than they were at the beginning of the season a good curl cut for Armani Moore who has struggled a little bit here in recent games Need him to have a big night. Poitras off the window. Rebound will come off to Kevin Punter. The guy that Sean talked about in the open over 23 games. Goldfield missed a three. That's probably not his shot. And a foul on the rebound. It'll be on Poitras. The last time Kentucky came off a loss, they went to Arkansas. And they they took it to the Razorbacks and they controlled that game really from start to finish And it was kind of like the turning point for a lot of this is trending in the right direction Where is Kentucky going as a team now? They take a loss and an emotional loss at Allen Fieldhouse and the, the question persists is is they are they going to continue to take steps forward? Here's Potter His jumper rims out and Murray with the rebound John defensively by Tennessee forcing the ball back on top to Ulis. He's going to take the three and fouled on the three. And that one is going to be on Bachman and it'll send Ulis to the free throw line for three shots. And Tyler Ulis has done an outstanding job of drawing fouls and getting to the free throw line and that time you elevate the defender up. You jump into him. You make the contact. That's an easy one. If there's anybody in the conference you wanted the line. He's it. Number one in the SEC in free throw shooting. A shade under 88%. When well, you think about Tyler Ulis, and, you know, we, we've talked about this. We talk about it with coaches. We talk about it with the players. You know, the importance of what he means to Kentucky basketball and his numbers in particular this year, the growth that you've seen, and obviously that comes with opportunity and minutes increased. But... There's so much asked of him, not just at the offensive end, not just trying to make them facilitate the offense and be a leader, but also at the defensive end, always initiating the attack. And you, know, you take Tyler Eulis off of Kentucky's basketball team. They got troubles. They're an NIT basketball team. <laughs> uh, I mean, he is as valuable as an individual player that you find in college basketball, and he continues to assert himself more and more. Knocked down all three free throws and a three-point lead. The score, you're allowed to bring out the pressure a little bit and try to turn Tennessee over. And I just think Tyler Eulis and his continued growth. And yeah, sure, there's Chris Dunn. And you know, if I was an NBA team, am I drafting Chris Dunn before I take a look at Tyler Eulis? Yeah. The size alone, 6'4", 220 plus pounds. But they're different kind of guards. The shoot around today, we were looking at Tyler and listed at 5'9", and he may be that, but he might only be about 150 pounds, too. And that's soaking wet. But tough as nails. You bet. Nice move by Marley Moore. Didn't finish it, though. And the rebounds, Kentucky's risk of the outlet to Eulis. Got a man to his right. The lob is too deep. And Kentucky had a transition opportunity there and let it slip away. First opportunity for Kentucky to get out in the open floor and run, unable to finish. Uh, they got to try to speed up this game right now. I think the tempo's a little slower. Eulis for three. Well, we just mentioned he does everything, and he's already got six points. And that's the lead for Kentucky. Six over the balls. Tennessee's got to settle in, in there on their home court here to get some good looks. is Hubs who did not start the game tonight because Rick Orange wasn't crazy about the way he played in the second half especially against TCU over the weekend there's a good look down low Alexander missed badly trying to get it over Marcus Lee 
That started because of his footwork. He was too narrow at his base, got pushed off his line, and that's a shot that he's going to be able to complete probably a year, certainly two years from now as he starts to fill out. Ten on the shot clock. Eulis, the lob underneath, and this time is going to be a foul called as he tried to get it into Marcus Lee. We started the game talking about the two guards, Kevin Punter for Tennessee and Tyler Eulis. One of them has gotten off to a hot start. He's number three. He's wearing blue. It's Tyler Eulis. Is presented by Hotels.com, the obvious choice for hotels. And in part by Infinity, luxury cars that deliver inspired performance. Points, points. Our points. There's got to be a way to redeem our hotel points. <laughs> I just want to take a vacation. This seems crazy. Oh, really? <laughs> Tell us something we don't know, Captain Obvious. Okay. With Hotels.com, when you collect 10 nights, you get one free. Oh. So you only need to know how to count to 10 to earn a free night at places like that nudist resort. Yeah, I don't know how that got there. Because you stayed there, took a selfie, and hung it prominently on the wall. Hmm? Hotels.com. They won't judge your life choices. At Burger King, get 10 chicken nuggets for just $1.49. Wait, the 10 nuggets deal is back again? $1.49 for 10 nuggets. Sweet! They're crispy and golden on the outside, made with white meat on the inside. Enjoy 10 chicken nuggets for just $1.49 today, only at Burger King. To introduce the new Infiniti QX50, we could have shown it on a winding mountain pass, or somewhere even more cliche, like a downtown street. But what distinguishes the Infiniti QX50 isn't where you can take it, it's how you feel taking it there. With generous cargo space, extended second row legroom, and coupe-like handling, the new QX50 from Infinity. Lease the new Infinity QX50 for $3.29 a month. Visit your local Infinity retailer. At Burger King, get 10 chicken nuggets for just $1.49. Wait, the 10 nuggets deal is back again? $1.49 for 10 nuggets. Sweet! They're crispy and golden on the outside, made with white meat on the inside. Enjoy 10 chicken nuggets for just $1.49 today, only at Burger King. Warriors, Wizards at 8, Wolves, Clippers at 10.30, tomorrow on ESPN. Quick six-point lead for Kentucky, 8-2, courtesy of Tyler Eulis as we check in third member of our team, Shannon Spake. Shannon. Well, Brad, you and Sean mentioned how important Tyler Eulis is to this team, and because of that, he plays a whole lot of minutes. Five games this season, he's played every single minute, and of course, 45 minutes in the overtime loss to Kansas Saturday night. He told me he felt pretty bad when he woke up Sunday morning. He was hurting, and Coach John Calipari really wants to start limiting some of his minutes. He said he would like to try to get him to about 34 minutes per game he said before the game you know he's had point guards in the past that he's played every minute of the game but because Eulis plays so hard every possession he really wants to save him for what he needs him yeah he and Kevin Potter are two of the most used guards in the league as far as minutes played in the game here's Eulis getting it inside to Briscoe and now he had an open look on a three gonna take the baseline jumper instead and the board comes off to Derek Reese Tennessee just one of eight shooting from the floor to get things going and they've got to free up Kevin Ponner Once the ball gets out of his hands, they've got to try to find a way to get him to be a more productive player He just got it out of his hands right there on the drive his first basket On the other end they didn't get back and now Murray goes up to got the rebound And we're gonna have a traveling or a foul, which is it gonna be? They're gonna get the foul on Armani Moore coming from behind a whole bunch of traffic under the hoop on this one, partner. Well, you score at one end, and then you've got to be really cognizant to get back in your defensive transition. And that time, Armani Moore, they, a little bit of a touch, not a lot there, but a good job scoring over the top. And that's where Kevin Punter's got to be aggressive. He cannot settle just for his three-point shot as much as we talked about in the open, shooting 56% at home in SEC play. He's got to assert himself and score going to the rim. Briscoe got two offensive rebounds in the second time he scored himself. Moore on the drive, a little floater, got it. All three of the field goals coming with at least one foot in the paint for Tennessee. Here's Poitras with a left hand. 
four for Poitras. And Poitras can have a really big night tonight. I mean, there's nobody on Tennessee's roster that can match him with his size, his physical stature, if he wants to assert himself. Armani Moore will try three way off the mark, and Briscoe's got another board. And the lob to Poitras. How about that break? First, it was Briscoe with his third rebound in the last 30 seconds, and then it transitioned a perfect lob. And just going from one end to the other, Briscoe does a nice job reading defensively. Nobody steps back, nobody reacts. And not only does he get the dunk, but he gets the opportunity to go to the free throw line for an N1. Orthrus can't connect on the three point play. Tennessee's one of those teams, their roster, it's, they're not going to get any tall. <laughs> and it's the smallest team Rick Barnes says he's ever had. You've got to be able to utilize your speed and quickness. And you see the size just bothering them underneath. This year with the block shot is 36th of the season. And stepping on the baseline, Kentucky turns it over. It's really difficult, though, for Rick Barnes when you're looking at this roster and you're trying to figure out, okay, you know, how, how do we match up? What, what, what do I have to do to put my players in the best position to be successful. It's part of the reason why they moved Kevin Punter to the point guard position. Ideally, you'd like to have him as a shooting guard, right. but nobody else is better with the basketball in their hands. Armani Moore gives you so much fight and so much toughness. But he's only 6'4". It's very difficult. Yeah. There's Mustella on a drive. And a good one it is. Dietrich Mustella getting more and more minutes as the season goes along. So we're averaging a little over eight points a game. But what you see from Tennessee is they space you out they look to attack, they curl, they interchange up top, and they just try to turn the corner and create a seam or a gap where they can get in that mid-range soft floater over the top. Kentucky almost turned it over again, and now the slam by Derrick Willis. Just a loose ball, and nobody got on him, and the big fella hammered it home. The uptick in the Kentucky season started when Derrick Willis asserted himself coming off that Mississippi State game. All of a sudden, he started being a little bit more aggressive. Now, they took the loss. He had the double-double at Auburn. Uh, but that kind of jump-started him as a stretch four and really opening up some spacing for a lot of the dribble drive action that Kentucky does. And he's an excellent outside shooter as well. Effort plays can make a big difference, and Scott LaBissier gets on the floor, tosses it to Derek Willis. He knows what to do with it. Making the most of his opportunities. And being from Kentucky and now getting to wear this uniform and playing such a significant role, it's just one of those things that you, the fan base rallies behind. But more importantly, it means so much to Derek. Yeah. Uh, to, to represent the, the name on the front of the jersey and to know that he's impacting the team's level of success. Last five games, he's averaged 11 points and eight rebounds, over eight rebounds, in fact. And as Sean said, Kentucky native out of Mount Washington. That's by eight here as we approach the 12 minute mark. Briscoe, nice pass to Poitras. Had it stripped on, but they're going to call a foul, I think, on Schofield. Let's see who got a hand in there. Nope. I think that back's going to be on Reese on the run by. Eric Reese picks up the foul. And fouls starting to stack up a little bit right now for Tennessee and not a deep roster for Rick Barnes that he can go deep into and try to find guys that can be productive in a game like this. Seven points for Alex Poitras, who's a Tennessee native out of Clarksville, which is uh, about mm, maybe three and a half hours from here. On the other side of Nashville. Got them both. Shannon. And it was a big week for Alex Poitras because his twin sister actually gave birth to a baby girl. So it's Uncle Alex moving forward. I which he's going to name the baby. There's Alex and Alexis. It's got to be something close. Maybe just Lexus. I like that. If she's listening, that's just my suggestion. I always take your advice. I always listen to you. And sometimes as a player, you need to take the advice of your head coach. And for Kevin Punter, that's exactly what he did to transition his game to the successful season that he's having so far for the Vols.
We are in a war. Your mission does not exist. From director Steven Spielberg. Grab half the plane's flown. Tom Hanks. Nobody is safe. Bridge of Spies. Get it on Blu-ray and digital HD today. To introduce the new Infinity QX50, we could have shown it on a winding mountain pass, or somewhere even more cliche, like a downtown street. But what distinguishes the Infinity QX50 isn't where you can take it. It's how you feel taking it there. With generous cargo space, extended second row legroom, and coupe-like handling, the new QX50 from Infinity. Lease the new Infinity QX50 for $329 a month. Visit your local Infinity retailer. To bring you Wendy's North Pacific Cod Sandwich, we send guys like this on boats like these in weather like this all the way up here for wild-caught fish like this that we panko bread like this for a sandwich that's light, crispy, and crunchy, which should make you and guys like this really happy. one of the most improved players in all the SEC and maybe college basketball, Kevin Punter. And you changed your shot. It's been a focal point of our broadcast yeah. every time we cover you. Take us through where you were on the floor and how you went about this. Uh, I, I, like I said, I never left this paint area. Uh, I pretty much stayed here and worked my way back. And, uh, you know, I started off with a medicine ball using one hand, you know, right up and over, you know, probably a thousand a day. Thousand a day. And you did it four hours a day mm -hmm. working on this shot. And did you think you'd have this much success not, when you change the shot? Not really. You know, I worked hard every single day, but um, I couldn't really see that, you know, that far down the road. I just wanted to continue to improve every day. He's improved. His play, his percentages, his points per game, he's happy about it. You know who's not? The opponents, because now they got to deal with them every night. Or any age. It's like being a golfer and changing your swing. And they say it takes like 100,000 reps to get there. And when I spoke with Kevin, he said it was like literally breaking down everything he did as a child. And you see the numbers, the shooting percentages, and where it's changed as well as points per game and 20-plus point games. But in particular, he told me there was a great deal of frustration. There was nights where he'd go to bed and say, you know what, I don't know if I really want to do this. This is hard because you're retraining muscle memory that you've done since the first time you picked up a basketball. And it's really hard not to revert back to what your bad habits or your previous form was. There's Willis on a rebound out the miss. Briscoe gets run over. Two guys go down in transition. It's just going to be a turnover. Yeah, Sean, I knew you were going to talk about the shot, and I knew you would love to hear more, so I talked to Kevin about it. He told me starting in October is when this shot really started to feel like second nature. He has no desire to revert back to the old way anymore. In fact, he told me he would watch Kevin Durant videos and try to duplicate that or try to mimic what he was doing. And everything you said, the release quicker, no wind-up, he says it feels like second nature now. 47 threes on the year, 48 actually with the last one he hit. What are you doing? He said, could you even shoot the ball like you used to? And he goes, no, I don't even remember how to do it. That's good. Drive by Armani Moore. Even the shots inside not dropping right now for the Vols. Approaching the midway point of the half. Poitras. Got it. That's just beautiful. You get the ball down low, you relocate out on the three-point line, you pass the ball back out. As he drives, the defense steps two, you step back. Beautiful pick and pop for Alex Poitras. Oh, boy, just guy going one direction, the pass going the other. As Tennessee, that's their first turnover, but it couldn't have come at a worse time as they're down 11 at the midway point of the half. Poitras is going to get a breather and a well-deserved one as he leaves with 10 points already. He's only averaging 10. So in the first quarter of the game, he's got as many points as he normally has over the course of an entire ball game. 
Ulis gets it back to Willis for three. Got it. A little drag dribble across the top, stretching the defense. They have to be accountable for Tyler Ulis, but in doing so, that's the difference that Derek Willis makes for this Kentucky Wildcat offense. Willis shoots 41% from out there. And back-to-back -back turnovers by the Volunteers. And it's a 14-point game after that last three-pointer. The on-ball screen comes. The defense goes over the top. And if you stay too long with Tyler Ulis, it's opening up your teammate on the outside. Speaking of opening up, right now it's Kentucky opening up on the balls. During last year's Super Bowl, an estimated 1 billion chicken wings were consumed, 100 million pounds of avocados, and a gazillion deli platters. This year, the game is changing. Good morning, Super Bowl 50. All day breakfast is here. We've got an All Hoops Wednesday tomorrow night on ESPN and ESPN2 with a twist for you. We'll call it the crossover. Our college announcers jump to the NBA. The NBA guys go back to college. Jeff Van Gundy's going to be with Dick Vitale on Notre Dame, Miami. Jay Billis and Doug Collins on the Warriors and the Wizards. And you see the other guys, John Barry, Fran Schiller, Jay Williams, Mark Jackson. That's tomorrow night. ESPN and ESPN2, another crossover night for you. Crossover pass to Willis, who missed a three. Which reminds me of my former college teammate Earl Watson tonight, interim head coach, his first game as head coach of the Suns. They go against the Raptors. Quite a bit of Kentucky Wildcats on that Suns roster down in Phoenix. I know you already talked to him today. Excited for Earl. Great opportunity. That one tipped in is going to be offensive interference, goaltending on uh, Schofield, so wave off the basket. Couple turnovers, an offensive goaltending, and not a recipe for success for Tennessee. And Jamal Murray hasn't even scored for Kentucky yet, and they've got a 14-point lead. He's their leading scorer at almost 17 and a half a game. Still hasn't scored. That one rimmed out. And Kentucky stepped on the baseline. Rick Barnes, head coach of Tennessee, wired tonight. Go. Use that traffic. Use it. Traffic. You got to finish those shots, man. Just score it. They have had trouble finishing their shots so far as we are down near the eight minute mark. And again, you, you hear him say, go, 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 though. They've got to be able to get out and transition, in particular for Kevin Punter. It's been a big part of his offensive game. You go against Kentucky in the half court set. Your length and their strength is going to hurt Tennessee. Great ball movement by Kentucky. And there's Murray's first basket. As the Wildcats moved it around the perimeter, got it to their best three-point shooter, and he knocks down a three. We were talking earlier today, Shannon and I, as well as you, were saying, you know what? It's going to be interesting to see how Kentucky responds. Emotional game in Lawrence coming on the road against Tennessee. How would this team play early in the first half? It's funny, when we came into the shoot around, the first thing I was going to ask John Calipari is, you played so well against a highly ranked team in one of the toughest environments in college basketball that you feel like you got something out of it. We didn't even have to ask the question. He said, no, no moral victories if that's what you're going to ask me. It's like he knew what we were going to say. And after he looked at the film, he still wasn't happy, but he said, I watched it by myself. I didn't want to chew them out because uh, they're emotionally kind of immature right now at this point after coming off the loss. So he said, I just watched it and then passed a few tips along to him. And he was very actually Conservative at the shoot around today too as far as getting on his players And it's uh, whatever whatever he's got going it's working right now 28 13 Long rebound out to my Stella Here's an open look for putter finally Impressed with the ball movement and man movement against the zone. I think so often when you see a team attack a zone defense, 
they're stagnant. They stand still once the ball passes out of their hands. But what's impressing me is as the ball leaves the hands of one Kentucky player, they're moving, relocating to another spot. Nice pick and roll to Poitras as Euless drew a double team and found number 22 for his 12 point. Keep bringing that double team. Tyler Euless is going to hurt you. He found Derek Willis on the pop. That time he found finds Alex Poitras on the roll. Whistle on the inside on Kentucky. And right now it's all Wildcats doing everything very well, including dancing before the game. 30 13 pants on the road. Meet Jimmy. He just got his license and look at him. He's already restoring this beast himself. He gets specialized tools from our free Lona Tool program. With our help, you can always fix your car with confidence. Hoods up, America. Nice. AutoZone. Indulgence no longer comes at a price. Well, actually, it does, but it's just $9.99. New Hot Shot Whiskey Chicken. Applebee's Grill and Bar favorites made a little better for you. Featuring new dishes loaded with flavor and all under 650 calories. For one moment in time, we were the best. <laughs> I know what he did for me. That's why I love Buddy Ryan. We looked at each other in the huddle and said, OK, it's showtime. We dominate the game. Well, after 30 years, they're still talking about us being the best. What if I told you it's not bragging if it's true? ESPN Films presents a 30 for 30 film brought to you by Volkswagen. The 85 Bears, Thursday at 9 on ESPN. Bass Pro Shops, it's more than a store. It's great service from folks who know what they're talking about. It's a great selection of the brands you trust. It's the right price right now with trophy deals throughout the store. Save big on this ladies zip fleece jacket for under $20 and a Bass Pro stainless steel fish fryer for under $50. Plus, don't miss our spring fishing classic, our biggest show and sale of the year. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. What happens when lobster gets grilled, baked, and paired with even more lobster? You get hungry, and you count the seconds until Red Lobster's Lobster Fest is back with the largest variety of lobster dishes of the year, like new dueling lobster tails, with one tail stuffed with crab and the other with langostino lobster mac and cheese. It's a party on a plate, and you know every bite of lobster lover's dream lives up to its name. Hey, eating is believing. So stop dreaming and start eating. I'm back in the studio with Seth Greenberg, Carl Ravitch. This might be a tough one for LSU fans to watch who, who wondered where Ben Simmons went late in that game against Oklahoma. Watch what he does here. This is Ben Simmons at his very best when he rebounds them on the defensive end and pushes the ball must be in his hands. Probably should be in this guy's hands, too. He's got 17 points and eight in the first half. Buddy Heald, he hasn't started this game yet. He has 17 points already. That's on ESPN <laughs> News, guys. <laughs> All right, Carl, there's a look at the standings coming into tonight. LSU at 6-2, and two, just a game off the pace. Same with Kentucky. A&M at 7-1. And, and Tennessee just trying to work their way back in this. Kentucky's hit their last seven shots to stretch this lead out to 17. You know, really surprised down the stretch against Oklahoma. In the final four, 48, Ben Simmons does not get one shot. Not one. And to me, that just, it, it blows my mind. And I know it was discussed by Brent and Dick during the end of that game. That was a golden opportunity to have a statement win on your home floor. They were in control of that game, and they let it slip away without playing through their best player. Well, on Tennessee, is going to be on Bachman. It'll be his second. A little bit better efficiency from Alex Poitras than the Tennessee Volunteers. I mean, Alex Poitras has asserted himself in this game. And as I mentioned, you know, the opportunity is there for him to have a huge game tonight. And he's having it so far. So is this guy. He's been the rest of the offense for the most part. With seven, Tyler Eulis. And that goes with three assists already in this game. And the assist to made field goal ratio really strong for Kentucky. Their ball movement, as we've talked about already in this broadcast, extremely crisp. Eight assists on 11 made field goals. Tyler got them both, five for five from the line. Lead goes out to 19. Where is
is the offense going to come from for Tennessee? It'll be a foul on Dominique Hawkins. With 6.29 remaining in the half. Saturday, we got a couple of good ACC matchups for you on ESPN. 2 o'clock Eastern, our first game, North Carolina State and Duke. Then at 7, number 2, North Carolina Tiger Heels taking on Notre Dame. Also streaming live on Watch ESPN and the ESPN app. Duke in desperate need of a win, having fallen out of the top 25 for the first time in about 100 years. <laughs> and Tennessee turns it over. It's been that time of year, though, the higher-ranked team last night in all three games. Lost SMU, lost at Houston, North Carolina lost, Baylor lost at home to Texas. Dr. Smart's team really starting to, to find their own. Princey Bay has been huge in the last couple of games. Indiana, Michigan is going to be a good one after us. We'll check in. Take on Indiana. Seven on the shot clock. Haven't had to worry about that much tonight. This one's knocked out by Punter. So three to shoot for Kentucky. You talk about scoring points and limited as far as point production goes. You need guys like Armani Moore to step up. Briscoe up and under. Just before the horn sounded, nice move by Briscoe. He's had an excellent first half. Also, if you're Tennessee, you kind of want to get some stops. Yeah, you would. The way things are going when you're shooting 24%. And Potter's fouled by Poitras. That's Poitras second. Little things execution, sideline, out of bounds. I think Tyler Eulis actually falling to the ground helped his teammate out. Nice curl cut. The defense had to kind of hop over, and Isaiah Briscoe able to complete the play. But where's the rotation that from was, the help side? Some nice basketball savvy by a freshman, though. You don't got three seconds on the shot clock. You're kind of thinking, I'm going to touch it. I'm going to just hoist it. And he went through traffic and took his time and made a reverse layup. Pretty good move. I think it's you know it's one of those things where you got three seconds. You figure there's three dribbles that you can have. Yeah. And if you've been experienced in those situations and with as much basketball that is played. Not only at the high school level, but obviously on the AAU circuit. These guys have been in that situation time and time again. Euless looking for a screen. Finally got it the second time. Hawkins on a runner. Potter with a rebound. Straight up with it. That's a first time in transition. They've gotten a decent look at a three and Mostella buried it. The three-point shot has got to start becoming a major part of Tennessee's arsenal tonight. And they have to hit at a much better clip than they have so far. And here's a steal by Monty Moore. Coast to coast for Moore, he kicks it out and threw it away. Wasted opportunity there. Better served at that point, as deep as he was, to go up. Even though there are three Kentucky Wildcats around him, you've got to use your shoulders and strength that Armani Moore has to finish over the top. He anticipated his teammate relocating, and instead he was watching. Murray. Hunter trying to pick him up. Leaves Willis out there again. Tell you what, Briscoe's been an offensive rebounding machine under there tonight. Didn't score on the last time he pulled it down, but nonetheless, for his size, he's doing yeoman's work down on the boards. And three offensive rebounds already for Briscoe. Six total. It's that kind of effort, though, that you're looking for. Yeah. You're, you're wanting to see if you're a Kentucky Wildcat fan. Willis. That's a poor shot. You, you could tell by the way he set his feet that that one had no chance going in. His body balance was completely off. That was a good shot. Heck of a drive by Carter. And a chance for a three-point play when we return. A little bit of a move here by the Volunteers. They cut the lead down to 14, just under four to go and a half. 
ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Zoolander 2 in theaters February 12th. And La Quinta. Book now at LQ.com to get the lowest price guaranteed. La Quinta. Warriors, Wizards at 8, Wolves, Clippers at 10.30, tomorrow on ESPN. When LaQuinta.com sends Craig Wilson a ready-for-you alert the second his room is ready, you know what he becomes? Great proposal. Let's talk more over golf. Great. How about over tennis? Even better. A game changer. The ready-for-you alert only at LQ.com. When someone's killing the most beautiful people... Peace out, world. One hero hey, handsome. will answer the call. A tiny phone, that is so retro. I'm gonna take a picture with my phone. Zoolander 2, February 12th. Where are you? Well, the squirrels are back in the attic. Mom? Your dad won't call an exterminator. Can I call you back? Mom? He says it's personal this time. If you're a mom, you call at the worst time. It's what you do. If you want to save 15% or more on car insurance, you switch to GEICO. It's what you do. Where are you? It's very loud there. Are you taking a Zumba class? If you're trying to be a little better, things just got a whole lot better. Introducing entrees loaded with flavor, not calories. Applebee's Grill and Bar favorites made a little better for you. Featuring new dishes all under 650 calories and starting at just $9.99. I got to share this. Oh, wait. Just got an alert from Wells Fargo about suspicious activity on my debit card. I just need to confirm that I made that purchase and done. Okay, can I have my drink now? Ah! Don't rush my art. Suspicious card activity alerts. Security, convenience, together. All right, they've gone to the half. LSU, they have 38. Ben Simmons has just about half of those. We'll see his shots, his shot selection coming up. Auburn's playing them tough. Meantime, we get a Michigan-Indiana game coming up at 9 Eastern time. On the Jeep Halftime Report, Seth will show us how Michigan is so effective. Guys? All right, Carl, we'll see you guys in uh, a little under four minutes. A little bit of a push here by Tennessee. They were down by 21. They've cut it to 14 and a chance to get to 13 on the free throw upcoming from Kevin Punter, who, by the way, in the last six games now, is 34 of his last 37 from the line. It's amazing, pretty good. amazing to think of the year that he's had, and he has not been named Conference Player of the Week once this season. Got 10 points right now, and the crowd, at least the student section, is trying to get into it here at Thompson Bowler. Murray. Trying to drive the baseline. Had it knocked away as the stop Tennessee was looking for. And now Putter, a pull up over Briscoe. He got fouled on the shot. Carl Hess is right there. And let's see if it's going to be three free throws or not. I'm not quite sure if he was outside or inside the line. Yeah, on the drive, inside the arc, a little veteran savvy here. Briscoe puts his hand right between the shooting pocket and as he released the ball, he pulled his arm back, Kevin Punter did, forcing Briscoe's hand into the contact. So you don't think it should have been a foul then? Nah, I think it should be a foul, but oh. it's, it's, just, it's just a savvy move. It's like playing out in the front yard with your, with your dad, you know? And, and you, you're trying to score against your dad, and your dad hooks you a little bit, and like goes, <laughs> oh, that's an end one, you know? Yeah, there's contact. You kind of initiated it, but it works. 10-0, Tennessee run. Trust me, my dad was a cop. <laughs> he knew all the tricks. Worse. He knew all the tricks. <laughs> or better. I shouldn't say it that way. Yeah, Maybe that's better. It. That's why you turned out okay. <laughs> I just said okay. Don't get a big hit. <laughs> we got a couple. We got to keep working at this thing. Yes, we do. <laughs> it's gotten a lot better though. In the last couple minutes, the Schofield picks up. The <laughs> to Auburn stretch for Frank Martin's team. You know, you look at their record and how and everybody wants to say, okay, well, look at who they've played and put holes at their resume. An opportunity here at Georgia, then at Texas A&M, LSU, and then getting to host Kentucky. That is a brutal four-game stretch. 
I understand Truck tells us now that uh, Georgia's up 10 right now in the first half of that game. Just under three to play here. 13 point Kentucky lead that was 21 at one point. Armani Moore trying to back in on Willis. Nice baseline move up the window. Armani Moore gets more out of a six foot four inch frame than just about anybody in this conference, you know? He understands angles. I'm not sure if he, if he took geometry, but he certainly knows it. I mean, he puts himself on the block, he gets you leaning one way and spins right off. Partner, let's take you back and, and teach you a little geometry here. And you try to create an angle, so you make the contact. Watch as he shifts Derek Willis's weight off of him, spins off, creates enough space. And when you're small in stature and you've got good, strong shoulders, upper body strength, that's the one way that you can neutralize size and athleticism. He leads the team in block shots. He's seventh in the conference in rebounding. And just for instance, as Murray knocks down the free throw. Just the line in a loss to TCU the other day. Gives you an idea about Armani Moore. Ten points, seven rebounds, six assists, and three steals. I mean, he works hard at it. And as you mentioned, playing out of position. I mean, fair to say, for yeah. the last two years, he has been forced and asked to do things that at six foot four you shouldn't have to be. Two minutes to go on the half. Schofield on a runner, and he's going to go to the free throw line. Well, what Tennessee's done is, is what they showed snippets of early in this game. It's space the floor. Nobody needs to post up. You're not going to score really with your back to the basket. Even on the Amarni Moore shot, he caught the ball off the short corner and then bounced his way in. If you're just playing with your back to the basket, you're clogging up driving lanes. And what you've seen Tennessee start to do is space the floor and look to drive and attack once they're a seam. They're being patient right now offensively. Schofield's done a nice job from the line. 18 out of 20 on the year. Make it 19 of 21. All four of his points from the strike. And we're back down to 11 again. Just under two minutes and a half. Euless, nice crossover dribble. He puts up a runner that was blocked. Uh-oh. And Tyler Euless is grabbing his left foot. He is still down on the floor and just now starting to make his way back. Trying to limp back. It's a five on four on the other end, and a three-pointer goes for Shavari Phillips. And now they stop play for Tyler Euless. He's immediately retying his left shoe, but he was hobbling down court. I don't know if it was because his shoe wasn't tied or if... He's limping. Well, good job by Tennessee taking advantage of the crossover by Euless as he elevates up. That left foot as he tried to push off the ground buckled underneath him. Watch his left foot as he plants it right there. His ankle turns out. And that's what kept him down on the floor and that's what gave the five on four advantage for Tennessee. Timeout taken by Kentucky. Leads down to eight. And Kevin Punter has been the guy. And he needs to continue to be the guy. Averaging 23 points per game. Second best in the SEC. And when he gets going, especially at home, he's difficult to stop. And what I love about his game is it's not just relying upon one aspect. Shooting three-point shots. He's willing to drive. He can mix it up underneath. Kentucky has gone over four minutes without a field goal and Tennessee meanwhile on a 17 to 4 run so it went from 34 13 21 point difference Euless is out there but he's got a little hitch in his giddy up bringing a ball up right now a 21 point lead cut down to eight as we approach a minute to play in a half defensive intensity for the balls has really improved here in the last few trips and Armani Moore Snatches down another rebound. Here comes Putter. Moore. And he's bumped in the lane. That's going to be on Willis, and that'll be two. 
Well, a smart job that time by Armani Moore in transition. You know, we talked about their patience and spacing the floor. That time they didn't need to have patience because there was a direct straight line drive available. Good job absorbing the contact on his hip and earning the trip to the free throw line. One thing that Armani is not strong at, and I mentioned everything that he is strong at, free throw line's not the greatest. 58% on the year. That's down, actually, from 62 a year ago. But I like when he makes me look bad. Down to seven. How important was he last year to this team? He started all 32 games, led the team in total rebounding, offensive rebound, block shots at six foot four. Both free throws go. He's got eight. The lead's cut to six. All of a sudden, Thompson Bowling Arena is alive and well. Minute to go in the half. Euless, great drive for the little guy on the baseline. Yeah, that left foot looked okay there on that drive. Yeah, it did. That up and under won't go. Schofield brought down the rebound, and he's fouled. And Rick Barnes again wired tonight here on the home floor. If we won't, this game is going to be won by the biggest competitor. Whoever wants to win is going to win it. So be tougher. I'm telling you. One, two, three, three, three. Come on, compete. Compete. Oh, come on. They are competing right now. Schofield back to the free throw line where he's hit five straight. And he's now 20 out of 22 on the year, which is about 89%. Built like a football player, you might say. His brother, O'Brien Schofield, is a member of the Atlanta Falcons and a former Seattle Seahawk. When Butch sees him at the free throw line, does he think, like, i got to get this kid in some pads next year and get him out of the gridiron? <laughs> Signing days tomorrow. <laughs> and a foul will be called on Shamari Phillips. He's his second. You extend out your defense that that high against Kentucky, and especially a guard like Tyler Ulis, he's going to make you pay. He's going to get pick up a cheap foul in really a non-operational area. Seven for seven from the strike tonight for Tyler. Named this week as a finalist for the Bob Cousy Award, which goes to the top point guard in the country, and certainly he belongs on that finalist list of ten. We talked about Kevin Punter not winning the SEC Player of the Week honors. Tyler Ulis is one of two players in the conference to win it multiple times. The other one, Jalen Jones from Texas A&M. Good company. Final 25. Armani Moore, one extra dribble underneath. Looked like he was going to go up with a shot and instead foul on the baseline. We turned it into a free throw shooting contest in the last couple of seconds, the final minute of this first half. So right now for Kentucky, they've got one, two, three, four, five guys that have two fouls. Tennessee with three players with two. And Armani Moore back where he was a moment ago. Tennessee hasn't missed from the free throw line. Still have 14 out of 14. Win a lot of games that way. They are the top shooting free throw team in the SEC at 74% a game. Boy, this will keep you in a lot of games, and it will win you a lot of games from 15 feet away. They're perfect so far in the half. Ripped another one. Trying to improve that free throw percentage you were talking about. <laughs> Final 12 seconds of the half. Murray almost got away with a walk. Rick Barnes was looking for a traveling call and didn't get it. And now Euless. Kick out. Willis had it blocked on the baseline. And what a comeback by Tennessee. They're going to head to the locker room with momentum. They don't have the lead, but they've got momentum. 42-36. Kentucky's lead sliced down to a half dozen. Shannon's with John Calipari. Coach, they pulled within six besides the fouls. What else has gone wrong in the last closing minute? can't foul on every possession. Make them score baskets. But that means you got to be down. You got to fight for position. You got to play them before they catch balls. They're doing a great job. Tennessee's playing. What did Tyler tell you about his foot? Didn't say anything. We saw him back out there, but did he say anything about the foot when he first came down? He's fine. Thanks, coach. 
Everything's fine except a 21-point lead is down to six at the break here in Knoxville. 42-36, our halftime score. Time for the Jeep halftime report. Carl and Seth are standing by in the studio. Guys. Hi, Brad. Thank you very much. Welcome to the halftime uh, to Calipari's point. My goodness, enough of fouls. Uncle on that. LSU and Auburn, Ben Simmons. Well, he had eight baskets in the first half. You're going to see all of them, Seth. Ben Simmons, he posted up. He shot jumpers. He attacked the basket off of defensive rebounds. He was aggressive. They played through Ben Simmons. If they do that, they're going to be in the conversation for an NCAA tournament bid. Love to see that jump shot there. He, he looks ambidextrous. And for the Magic Johnson comparisons... Here you go, right here. This is the play. Defensive rebound. He attacks. You've got to stop the basketball if you're the fighting Bruce Pearls. Auburn didn't. He gets to the rim. He goes left-handed. He goes right-handed. Here we'll go with the right hand, and then the last one you'll see is this sort of foul line extended jump shot, which a lot of people, it's like a football team that doesn't run. you got to do it once in a while. And he know. committed to that shot. He didn't aim it. He jumped up, and he committed to it. All right, so you've seen that in his game before. Tonight we're seeing a little bit more of it. He's you, got to trust himself, believe in himself, and he has room and rhythm. Step into it, jump up, and shoot it. Hey, the worst thing that could happen, so you miss a shot. You, miss it. you think this is a result of the Oklahoma game? Just a reminder, working on it, what, what led to that? To me, this is Jim, uh, Johnny Jones bringing him into the office and saying, you know what, if we're going to make a run for the NCAA tournament, you need to be aggressive. And you know what, the rest of your teammates, they need to play through you. The ball has to be in your hands. Right. And don't worry about it. Be aggressive, attack, make plays. Look, you're not a selfish guy. Look to attack and make plays. Be a little That's bit. That's what he did. Be a little bit. Meantime, our game, and uh, Cal made the point, uh, we're fouling on every possession you got to play a little bit better defense. Is it is it more on the team, or is this about the game right now? Too easy early. Alex Porthris goes out. And, you know, John, we talked yesterday. He said he was really struggling finding rotation because the inconsistency. Things came so easy early that guys stopped competing. They stopped sharing the ball. They stopped running offense with good pace. Right. And then on the defensive end, all right, you can't guard unless you move your feet. Sit down in a stance and guard someone. All right. Let's hope, too, that the ankle, which did get rolled, doesn't necessarily swell up during the halftime break. South Carolina and Georgia, talking about Tyler Ulysses' ankle. Georgia with an early lead and uh, off the pick. Seth and I right back on. And you know what? Giving America what they want. <laughs> Four of us? Is that, is that what you're suggesting? Well, I think this Georgia team has potential. It, it, to me, the key is their backcourt. Their backcourt's got to remain aggressive. Charles Mann, J.J. Frazier, when they're aggressive, they're good. Kenny Gaines, by the way, great left-handed layup from Seth we just saw, too. That was terrific. We'll be back Super Tuesday. Look ahead to Michigan and Indiana after this. This Halftime Report is presented by Jeep Grand Cherokee. Be ready for anything winter throws at you. Indulgence no longer comes at a price. Well, actually, it does, but it's just $9.99. New Hot Shot Whiskey Chicken. Applebee's Grill and Bar favorites made a little better for you. Featuring new dishes loaded with flavor and all under 650 calories. Five Hour Energy presents Why Are You So Tired? Ah, the after lunch food coma. We've all been there. You had planned on ordering the salad, but the pasta and fries looked so good. Now you're trying to find a place to catch a few Z's without the boss catching you. Next time, grab a great-tasting five-hour energy shot. It'll help you stay alert and productive no matter what's on the menu. Now is the time for five-hour energy. There's no one I'd rather share with. No one I'd rather have dinner and a movie with. No one I'd rather lean on. Being in love is an amazing thing. Being in love with your best friend is everything. Introducing the Ever Us two-stone ring. One diamond for your best friend, one for your true love. For the one woman in your life who's both ever us. New this Valentine's Day at Jared, K and Zales. If you're trying to be a little better, things just got a whole lot better. Introducing entrees loaded with flavor, not calories. Applebee's grill and bar favorites made a little better for you. Featuring new dishes all under 650 calories and starting at just $9.99. Hey, Ken, what do you want these? Yeah, just throw them back there. Okay. Wow, what are all those? Peabody, Riders Guild, Amy. Dude, you've been here like a week. Has it been that long? The average American has an anxiety-inducing $16,000 in credit card debt. Ready to lessen that stress? It's easy. 
Shop for a credit card at LendingTree and transfer that balance. Because available this week, get 0% interest for 15 months with no transfer or annual fees. Or 0% interest for 18 months with a 3% transfer fee. Pay it off faster, save a ton of money, and finally, relax. Find your perfect card in under a minute, right now. LendingTree, the place to shop for money. Yes, we are twins. <laughs> When I went on to Ancestry, I just put in the name of my parents and my grandparents. I was getting all these leaves and I was going back generation after generation. You start to see documents and you see signatures of people that you've never met. I mean, you don't know these people, but you feel like you do. You get connected to them. I wish that I could get into a time machine and go back 100 years, 200 years and just meet these people. Being on Ancestry, it just made me feel like I belong somewhere. Discover your story. Start searching for free now at Ancestry.com. You are watching the Jeep Halftime Report. Here at the touchscreen, we're going to look at our two ESPN games, one on ESPN2 at 9, the other one, Indiana and Michigan at ESPN. Two teams that have overcome big injuries this year, and both have been able to do it with scoring. Yogi Ferrell's been tremendous. And meantime, Michigan, without Karis LeVert, you figure we're in trouble. They have been bombs away all year. Both of these teams make over 10 threes a game, and Michigan does a great job of pushing in transition and also in the half court. They spread you out, they drive it, they kick it, and they can make shots. Right here off of this loose ball, look how hard they run. Abdul Rahman right here. He's going to run the court, and he's going to run it wide. That's the key. If you're going to push it in transition, you got to run it wide. There's Zach Irvin. He's going to run it. With the basketball, Derek Walton's going to look to push that basketball and attack. They're going to come at you in waves, and once they kick it ahead, you're going to see four players outside the three-point line. But that fourth player, Duncan Robinson, is one of the best shooters in the country. He's going to come behind the play, step in, and knock down his three. 41% of their offense comes from the three-point line. But in the half court, they're going to look to space you out once again. On this down screen right here, you can see Zach Irvin set the down screen. But Mark Donnell, he's going to back cut this screen, which is going to create a big gap. But once again, it's about spacing in Michigan. They space out the floor. You're going to have four players, once again, outside the three-point line. So what does Dirk Walton do? He's going to drive this gap and make a play. As he drives it, watch what happens here. Duncan Robinson is going to spot up, come behind the play, and once again, knock down to three. He was a Division III transfer from Williams, one of the best shooters in college basketball. They shoot over 41% from the three-point line. They push it, they execute in the half court, and they can really shoot the three. Now, both of those highlights were against Rutgers in Minnesota. Indiana's defense has been better, and maybe this is a Thomas Bryant game, too. Maybe Indiana goes inside a little bit tonight. Well, they need to attack inside because Mark Dunnell, he they do not have a rim protector in Michigan. Right. And Bryant is one of the best field goal percentage shooters in college basketball when he catches it tight. All right, meantime, our game on ESPN2, a couple of teams coming off of losses, both West Virginia and Iowa State off losses, Seth. Uh, is this going to be an advantage because it's just a home game for Iowa State? Well, Iowa State, Hilton Magic is for real. And, you know, Iowa State has the type of team that can handle the basketball and attack pressure. All right, we look forward to that. That's 9 Eastern time, ESPN2, big one between West Virginia and Iowa State. Seth and I back in a moment. Nobody gets you closer to Super Bowl week than NFL Network. This is the big days with the most coverage possible throughout the entire week. Welcome back to NFL Total Access. More than 88 hours of live reports. They shut things down. They tackle very well. All the access. When you kick off that ball, he's going to be ready to play. And the most game day coverage anywhere. We have been here all day, all morning, all week long. To the end zone! Nobody does Super Bowl week like NFL Network. Nobody. To bring you Wendy's North Pacific Cod Sandwich, we send guys like this on boats like these in weather like this all the way up here. For wild-caught fish like this, that we panko bread like this, for a sandwich that's light, crispy, and crunchy, which should make you and guys like this really happy. America, would you like an extra thousand Washingtons with your refund? Turn my music. A thousand people win a thousand dollars every single day for a month. I will not lose. It's refund season. I gotta share this. Oh wait, just got an alert from Wells Fargo about suspicious activity on my debit card. I just need to confirm that I made that purchase and done. 
Okay, can I have my drink now? Ah. Don't rush my art. Suspicious card activity alerts. Security, convenience, together. It isn't always easy to know where you stand financially. Multiple accounts, investments, insurance. It can leave you wondering how it all fits together. At Northwestern Mutual, we help you see your whole picture. Find out what you truly want, and then together we design a plan to go get it. There's a confidence that comes in knowing what financial security is and doing what it takes to achieve it. At Northwestern Mutual, we help you live life differently. This is shaving. A blade. Many blades. Sharp blades. Blades here, blades there, some more over there. Oh, that's not another blade. This is shielding with lubrication here and here. The new Gillette with Pro Shield lubrication before and after the blades. Shields from irritation for a close, comfortable shave. The new Pro Shield from Gillette. The best a man can get. And one Pro Shield refill gets you up to one month of shaves. This halftime report is presented by Jeep Grand Cherokee. Be ready for anything winter throws at you. At LSU, got 17 from Ben Simmons in the first half. Here's the second half. And I really like Josh Gray kicking the ball ahead and putting the ball in Ben Simmons' hands. On the SEC Network, he's got 21. Meantime, on ESPN News right now, Buddy Heald just underway. Mentioned that he had 17 before the game started. And they find him. That's the key. Spangler catches it in the high post, kicks it out. He'll knock down to three. You know what this has been? The Jeep. Half Half-time time report. report. It has. <laughs> ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Disney Cruise Line. Indulgence no longer comes at a price. Well, actually it does, but it's just $9.99. New Hot Shot Whiskey Chicken, Applebee's Grill and Bar favorites made a little better for you. Featuring new dishes loaded with flavor and all under 650 calories. Meet the Hoopers, the All-Star. incredible dream we were greeted by princesses and swashbuckling pirates we escaped to our own island and we could fly we met all kinds of wonderful characters and were guests at a royal banquet and the best part it wasn't a dream at all when you dream of the perfect vacation for the whole family the difference is Disney if you're trying to be a little better, things just got a whole lot better. Introducing entrees loaded with flavor, not calories. Applebee's Grill and Bar favorites made a little better for you. Featuring new dishes all under 650 calories and starting at just $9.99. The University of Tennessee is a place where minds meet and exchange ideas. Peyton Manning's comprehension skills are widely known. Professor George Farr studies materials down to one billionth of a meter. He's advanced everything from microcircuitry to cancer research. The exchange of ideas isn't always predictable. Blue 58, Omaha. But at Tennessee, it's all about the possibilities. Omaha, really? From the very minute you have this idea that you want to be in business, you need to have that card. Presentation is everything because they're not only first impression of you, but now you're handing them this product that really is kind of going to define your business in their mind pretty quickly. You want a very thick uh, card that feels nice in your client's hand. I think it's nice to have a choice because sometimes you want a glossy card, but for other projects, I don't want necessarily want all that. Your business card is a reflection of you. It should say exactly what you want. With a range of design, stock, and finish options at Vistaprint, it will. Get 500 business cards starting at just $9.99. Just enter promo code TV500 at vistaprint.com. That business card, when I make a connection with someone, has to be phenomenal. It has to be elegant and invoke all the things that Diamond stands for. Just that professionalism is going to make you, as a business owner, more successful just right off the bat. Vistaprint.com. 
watching Super Tuesday presented by Hotels.com. Back in Knoxville, it's the SEC on ESPN. Tennessee and Kentucky just about set to go to the second half. 42-36, the Wildcats in front. Tennessee, perfect from the free throw line. Kentucky's only missed one. And both teams had a couple of field goal drops, but good first half, really, Sean. That was a good first half, and early in this game, it was the combination of Tyler Eulis and Alex Poitras. They worked well together. They were aggressive. They got into the paint. They were unselfish. And things were rolling, and then all of a sudden, Kevin Hunter asserted himself at the offensive end of the floor. He broke out of a brief shooting slump to ignite the offense. He's got 12 points early on here. Uh, and, and what really stands out to me is the level of competitiveness. I think Tennessee elevated their play. They were down by 20. Right. The light flipped on. It started the defensive end being able to string together some stops. It was 34 to 13 at one point to cut it down to six at halftime. You've got to think the momentum is definitely with Tennessee. Now, keep in mind, they had a 14-point lead against TCU last weekend. And they let that one slip away. I think the first four minutes of the second half is going to tell us a tale about how good this game is going to be. Tennessee has struggled all season long in the second half. Hey. Rick Barnes told us to shoot around today. He goes, if we only played 20 minutes, we might be undefeated. <laughs> might be the number one right. team in the country. Here's Potter. Armani Moore trying to back down. Euless does, but the hook shot's well short. takes it right back. This time the give is on the wing to Buckman. And Buckman puts it in overdrive. Well, Coach Calipari talked about going in the locker room, the free throws, not needing to foul and sending them to the free throw line. I think that's what really disrupted the flow of this game was the number of free throws that we saw down the stretch. Check in with Shannon as Poitras scores underneath. Well, that's a toughness that Rick Barnes really liked out of his guys at that first half close. He said, you know what, I saw some competitiveness out of them. And, of course, we heard him challenge his guys when he was over there on the bench. He did tell me we gave up too many offensive rebounds. And he said, offensively, I don't want them to overthink it. At times, I felt like they were trying to run the offense rather than just playing. I think we'll see more three-point shots from Tennessee in the second half than we did in the first as Poitras can't connect on the three-point play. He does have 14 on the night, though. And I think you continue to try to get the ball to Alex Poitras. As I mentioned in the first half, there's nobody on the floor that can match him physically. Hunter over Willis. Schofield trying to keep it alive. And he draws the foul. And that's going to be on Poitras. And that's three on him. You mentioned it. Five Kentucky Wildcats with two fouls in the first half. Rick Barnes starts the second half with Mostella on the floor. It's the only change from the starting lineup. And quickly, you John Calipari is going to sit point through down after that third foul, put Marcus Lee back in there, but Lee's playing with two as well. Hunter up high, down low, got it. And he now he's playing without a shoot. His shoe fell off. Down to four points, Kentucky's lead. And they just tossed Kevin Punter his shoe, but uh, Tyler Eulis got out of position, came up too high, and created that lane and that opportunity. Punter knows he lost his shoe, so what do you do with it? Hey, I, I, I lost my shoe. Just <laughs> toss it out of bounds and go play some defense. But that was poor recognition that time for Tyler Ulis. He, he got on the high side away from the basket and gave up that lane. If you lose a shoe in Lexington, they send you to the blacksmith. It's a little different here in Tennessee. Here's Murray. Got it to drop. It was a tough first half for Murray, just one of six from the field. A nice job seeing him attack off the perimeter instead of settling. Putter over Willis. Got it! Putter was 
is 17 and leads down to three. Murray with the answer on the other end, can't get it. And out of bounds to the Wildcats. Not a lot of space. And a year ago, we, we showed you in the first half how he's adjusted his shot. A year ago, there's no way that shot gets off because it took so long for his release last season. A quicker release gets it right over the top of the fingertips of Derek Willis. Two minutes into that opening four minutes I talked about, and the lead's been cut in half. So Tennessee's got the better of it in the opening couple of minutes. Murray and Eulis handling it out on top with seven on the shot clock. Murray in traffic. Briscoe up and under. At least two times now late in the shot clock that Briscoe's been able to finish. Potter lost the handle. Murray going the other way. Score it. How quickly does the game change? <laughs> you're right there, you're knocking on the door. You play good defense and you give up a layup late in the shot clock. A quick turnover leads to another run out the other end. Schofield, three-pointer. Got it. Seventeenth three-pointer of the year for Admiral Schofield. Murray fade away from the elbow. Ooh, nice shot. How many times this year have we seen Jamal Murray? Once he sees one go down, it starts to spiral and really gets going. He's got six of the half, 11 for the game. Costella forced one, but he's fouled by Briscoe. Jamal Murray just one of six in the first half. He comes out of the locker room and starts aggressively attacking. This was off the steal in transition, able to finish. That was after Isaiah Briscoe wrapped it around underneath when the game was down to three. And then the savvy footwork right there, the balance that he has underneath to push ever so slightly back and fade away on that shot, creating the space to finish up over the top. Here's Dietrich Mostella, the sophomore out of Decatur, Alabama, at the free throw line, and Tennessee still hasn't missed from the stripe. First two go for Mostella. Marcus Lee goes out. LeVisier comes back in for Kentucky. And Mostella has a standing vert of over 33 inches. He needed all of it to kind of elevate up and try to get that shot off and earn himself a trip to the free throw line. His three from the strike cuts it back to three. Willis, his triple, too strong. Rebound, Tennessee. Jimbari Phillips gets it to punter. Punter all the way, rejected by the Vissier. Now Mostella for a tie. Up and down we go, three on two, Kentucky. Briscoe off the window. Briscoe's ability to finish in the paint, a little bit off balance, drifting, and utilization of the glass that time, superb. for the layup and missed it but he's fouled Isaiah Briscoe picks up the foul but the other end of the floor watch him as he goes by the defense drifting the soft touch over the top to extend out the Cats lead Thunder Warriors Saturday at 9 on ESPN here in the city, parking is hard to find. Seems like everyone drives. And those who do should switch to GEICO because you could save hundreds on car insurance. Oh, perfect. Valet parking. Hello. Evening, sir. Here's the keys. And uh, go easy on my right, mate. Hmm, wouldn't mind some of that beef Wellington. To see how much you could save on car insurance, go to GEICO.com. Ah! It's okay! 
you come telling me I can't do it. The moment that gun go off, can't none stop you. Not color. Lock it all out! Not money. Not fear. Not even hate. There ain't no black and white. There's only fast and slow. For those 10 seconds, you are completely free. I'm Jesse Owens. Rated PG-13. The new Sprint LTE Plus network delivers faster download speeds than Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile, based on data from an independent third party. And to celebrate, we're cutting their rates in half. Switch to Sprint and save 50% on most Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile rates. And we'll cover your cost to switch up to $6.50 per line. Only from Sprint. Free is great. Free refills, free blocks of cheese, and free battery tests. We offer free testing because we don't sell people parts they don't need. With our help, you can always fix your car with confidence. Hoods up, America. Get in the zone, auto zone. During last year's Super Bowl, an estimated one billion chicken wings were consumed, 100 million pounds of avocados, and a gazillion deli platters. This year, the game is changing. Good morning, Super Bowl 50. All day breakfast is here. Tomorrow night on ESPN, the ESPN2 will call it crossover. Our college announcers jump to the NBA, and the NBA guys go back to college. There's your pairings. I could just hear Dick Vitale saying to Jeff Van Gundy, Oh, Mr. Van Gundy, it's a BDI. It's a ball dome index. Oh, oh, oh. Here's some of the crossover guys. Hey, you look at this. You know what stands out to me? What's up with Billis's arms? He picked that picture up he because had to of his arms and his hair. I mean, look at look at how he's, he's ripped. He looks like he's ready for the WWE. I did all those guys' games when they were in college, except I didn't make a lot of trips to Nazareth. You didn't? I'm sorry, Jeff. Just didn't didn't get there. You know, John Barry, though, prior to De La Salle High School out in Northern California, went to Georgia Tech. His brother Brent. Went to Oregon State and, and Drew, Drew followed Georgia him to Tech. Georgia Tech. Isaiah yeah. Briscoe on the bench, four personal fouls. We still have a perfect night going. 20 for 20 for Tennessee from the free throw line. Let's check in with Shannon. You know, John Calipari said before the game, one of the things is he wanted his team to learn from that Kansas loss was that we gave one away. And they've been talking a lot about winning basketball within this organization. And he just told his guys in the huddle, listen, we, we fouled a three-point shooter and we've missed some rebounds. That is not winning basketball. You know what it is, winning basketball, though, is, is trying to score in the paint. Ten of their 12 second-half points have come in the paint for the Kentucky Wildcats. That's where they need to continue to look to attack Tennessee. They're second in the conference and points in the paint at about 36 per LSU's number one. Here's Poitras in the paint. Now Monty Moore with a rebound. He was sitting on that left shoulder. He should have spun back baseline. Would have had a clean look off the glass. Hunter looking for a screen. Got it to Moore on the drive. The lead is down to one. Now Monty Moore's got the last four Tennessee points. 54-53. Remember, this is a Tennessee team that trailed by 21 in the first half. No look pass. Offensive foul. Tennessee ball. With Kentucky driving in the paint. And Armani Moore, who has done so much at the offensive end, slides over. Tyler Eulis thought his feet were inside the arc. They weren't. He gets the call and they go the other way. Armani Moore in the last couple of possessions. Two free throws, a field goal, a rebound, and taking a charge. And the foul is on Hawkins. Hey. Coach Calipari almost put Isaiah Briscoe back in the game. The assistant coach and staff said, Go, coach. You got he's, four. He's got four, <laughs> and he had to sit him right back down. It's five team fouls on Kentucky. Play defense for your feet, and sometimes when you're fatigued, you play it with your upper body, and that's usually when you get in foul trouble. Tennessee's never led, they do now. Timeout, Kentucky. 
From 21 down in the first half to up a deuce with 14 to go. Direct from our imagination. The all-new Civic from Honda. Five Hour Energy presents, Why Are You So Tired? That would be the sound of your alarm going off. Unfortunately, your other alarm went off every two hours throughout the night, which means you're going to be alarmingly tired at work today. Listen, the truth is, as a parent, you'll never get enough sleep. But you can get this. A great tasting five hour energy shot. It'll help you be bright eyed and bushy tailed, just like him. Now is the time for five hour energy. When Lakita.com sends Craig Wilson a ready for you alert the second his room is ready, you know what he becomes? Great proposal. Let's talk more over golf. Great. How about over tennis? Even better. A game changer. The ready for you alert only at LQ.com. Indulgence no longer comes at a price. Well, actually, it does, but it's just $9.99. New Hot Shot Whiskey Chicken. Applebee's Grill and Bar favorites made a little better for you. Featuring new dishes loaded with flavor and all under 650 calories. I know how it is. You're all set to book a flight using your airline credit card miles. And surprise, those seats sometimes cost a ridiculous number of miles, making it really hard to book the flight you want. Luckily, there's a better way. With the Capital One Venture Card. With Venture, you'll earn unlimited double miles on every purchase every day. And when you're ready to travel, just book the flight you want on any airline. Then use your miles to cover the cost. Now you're getting somewhere. What's in your wallet? Tennessee by two as we take a look at tonight's Reese's Perfect Play. Sean breaking down the defense. And Amani Moore does an outstanding job on the catch. He's going to drive into this area. And what you need to watch is Tyler Eulis because he is going to float out into this direction and drift. And when he does that, he's going to leave a wide open three-point shot from the outside by Mostella. And see Eulis just turns his back to his man, loses vision. A nice job driving and then kicking out to the shooter. Mostella at least one three-pointer in the last 13 straight games and the big one a moment ago has given Tennessee their first lead. Poitras lost the handle going up. Got it back though. Out to Eulis. He'll try a triple. Got it. Big moment, stepping up and making big plays. That time, Poitras loses control of the ball, but Tyler Eulis had his feet set, and there was no doubt about it up on the release. Second three of the night for Eulis, 17 points on the game. Moore driving against Willis. Missed the layup, got it back. Punter way outside, missed a three, and Poitras will clear it off for Kentucky. Eulis to Willis for a triple. Boy, just like that, Kentucky regains the lead and the momentum. Back-to-back -back plays. Wide open, uncontested shots from the outside. It was Eulis on the tip out by Poitras and then Eulis facilitating the offense in transition. The defense collapses on him. I mean, no one is even in the pitcher. Derek Willis doesn't have that much room when they're warming up before the game. I mean, that was an easy look to get his feet set and knock it down. See a couple of three-pointers tonight. His last one giving Kentucky a four-point advantage with 13 to go from Thompson Bowling Arena. Game one of two here on Super Tuesday. Michigan, Indiana follows us. Potter over Eulis. 19 for Potter. Approaching his average of 23. Murray was at a hot second half. It continues. I love when he attacks, jump stops on balance, and elevates up over the top. Can finish with either hand when he gets there. Four field goals in this half in the opening seven and a half minutes of it. Armani Moore thought about a three. Instead, he goes inside and the bounce pass to Schofield. Playmaking 
playmaking ability with his size. He has a good feel and awareness of where his teammates are and understands also his strengths and weaknesses. He has been 0 for his last eight or the last six home games from beyond the arc. Eulis pulled up from 18 straight away, lost it, but Moore last touched it. It'll be Kentucky ball. When you're struggling from home and you have lack of confidence in your three-point shot, the defense closes out, you can make him pay. Alex Poitras overcommits and Schofield makes him pay. To bring you Wendy's North Pacific Cod Sandwich, we send guys like this on boats like these in weather like this all the way up here for wild-caught fish like this that we panko bread like this for a sandwich that's light, crispy, and crunchy, which should make you and guys like this really happy. The car that was once everyone's first is now everyone's next. Introducing the all-new 2016 Civic from Honda. When the world's most beautiful people are in danger, peace out, world. Only one team We're back. can save the day. Derek, toss me the knife. You got it. You guys are the absolute worst. Zoolander 2, February 12th. What happens when lobster gets grilled, baked, and paired with even more lobster? You get hungry, and you count the seconds until Red Lobster's Lobster Fest is back with the largest variety of lobster dishes of the year, like new dueling lobster tails, with one tail stuffed with crab and the other with langostino lobster mac and cheese. It's a party on a plate, and you know every bite of lobster lover's dream lives up to its name. Hey, eating is believing. So stop dreaming and start eating. Bass Pro Shops, it's more than a store. It's the right gear for wherever your adventure takes you. And so many clothing options to choose from. Get the right price right now with trophy deals throughout the store. Save big on Redhead Tech Fleece Camo Hoodies for under $25. This 10 bearing enticer spinning combo for under $40. Plus, don't miss our Spring Fishing Classic, our biggest show and sale of the year. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. Back with Seth, Carl Ravitch here, Buddy Heald there. Oklahoma up 16 to 10, and it's a layup for him. That translates into the NBA. Pushing in transition, the defense defends inside out, bam, jump up, knock down the three. You can see his act on ESPN News. Soon on ESPN, Yogi Ferrell, Indiana, playing a lot better right now against a Michigan team set on shooting threes. Brad Sean. All right, Carl, here it's a two-point game. Kentucky led by six at halftime. Tennessee actually took a lead of 56-54. Both teams have really warmed up in the second half. Kentucky shooting 69% from the floor. Tennessee 57 right now. Entry pass is kicked. The crowd here has been outstanding, and it's split. I mean, when Kentucky ran on the floor tonight, you heard a lot of applause, and then all of a sudden brought the booze out from the, <laughs> the Tennessee faithful. Big Blue Nation champ was just going on coming out of that timeout. Tyler Eulis really kind of off balance and out of control, but he did draw a foul as we check in last time out with Rick Barnes wired. Play harder on the defensive end, all right? Play harder, compete. Just out-compete them. Every possession on that end. If we take care of the defense, Ben, I told you, they know, we know, we will explode on offense, all right? And then hope that somebody misses a free throw, and Tyler Eulis just did. Third time, Kentucky's missed a free throw. The first time for Tyler, who is now 10 of 11 from the strike. So cool, calm, and collected when he steps to the free throw line. He misses one. Again, we're talking about Coach Cal talking about making winning plays. There's no doubt that Tyler Eulis knows how to make winning plays. Amani Moore couldn't find anybody to pass it to, so he knocked it down himself. Tie game at 63, only our second tie of the night. The first one is at two apiece. 
Here's Murray, and Moore fouls him. And I mentioned the lack of confidence in particular in this building. Armani Moore doesn't want to shoot the shot. And Marcus Lee backs off and finally goes, you know what? I haven't made one in six games. <laughs> I might as well knock one down. And that's his first made three now in seven games here. Kentucky turns it over. Talking about Kentucky scoring. The efficiency since the 14, 14 mark. They're 10 of 21. It's dropped a little bit there. They've led by 21. But it's been Tennessee that has picked up the floor spacing and execution. Look how spaced out the floor is. There's nobody in the paint. Alexander finally goes down there. Balls trying to regain the lead here with eight on the shot clock. Potter has a look. Got a part of a screen. Missed a three, though. Poitras made a run at him. Was not a clean look. And it'll go back to Kentucky. Good defense that time by Kentucky. They were there. They didn't allow any separation. They didn't reach in. Briscoe picked up a cheap foul earlier in the half when he brought his arm down instead of keeping it straight up. Euless from the free throw line. Rebound's going to come off to Alexander, and he's fouled. And if it's on Poitras, so it would be four. It is, and it is. Four on Poitras. The 10 7 mark, he's got to come out and drop that down. And that foul probably wouldn't have happened if Marcus Lee had just done his job on that possession. Had the opportunity to bring the rebound in strong and instead got it deflected out of his hands. And when Tennessee got it, Alex Poitras was in poor position and picked up the foul. There's some full court pressure for the first time tonight from Kentucky. Tyler Ulysses has made Kevin Punter's night miserable with that defense right in his chest. Four on the shot clock. Baseline jumper goes for Hubs, his first basket of the night after not starting tonight. And he puts Tennessee back in front. Murray, the pull up off the mark. Punter the rebound. Tennessee in transition. And Fip, uh, Willis knocks it out of bounds or it might have been a breakaway. When you don't have true back to the basket players, you post up off the block, you create space, and you try to force the defensive player to shift their weight and allow you to step back or create space to finish over the top. And that's what Hubs was able to do. Tennessee's second lead of this half and the game. Moore trying a little skip pass inside. It got booted out of there. Poor angle that time, though, for Armani Moore. He's got to dribble and create a better angle. After Michigan and Indiana, stick around for Sports Center at night. The two Johns will be along. If not the NHL, back in action. Sports Center at night. Tonight, after college hoops, right here on ESPN and streaming live on Watch ESPN and the ESPN app. How about the NHL All Star over the weekend? It was a little different game, wasn't it? A little different. John Scott. Go, go, go. It's the MVP. MVP. After not even wanting really the empty event for the NHL. Schofield tries a triple. It comes free, and Robert Hubbs has the easiest rebound of the night. Look what I find. Coach Calipari talks about this every time on Bennett practice. You got to pass with two hands, and you got to rebound with two hands. That time Murray tried to go with one. That's why he was unable to corral the ball in. Hubbs for the elbow. Rebound will be Briscoe's, and he had a lot of them early in the first half. Eulis gave up a three. Murray won't. Rebound is Tennessee's. Shambari Phillips. Approaching the eight-minute mark. A great possession that time for Kentucky. They got a very clean look. They're just not knocking down the shot. Oh, oh. Potter is all alone in the lane, and Phillips didn't see him. Somebody blew an assignment there, and... Kevin Carter was standing alone in the lane just saying, hey, how about me? 
foul on Willis will send Hubs to the free throw line. You mentioned Kevin Punter was wide open. Watch as he comes off the screen. The communication right here, they don't talk themselves through it, and they missed an opportunity to get an easy one underneath. And you saw when Tyler Ewells made contact, he was pointing, and Jamal Murray looked back at him and said, where'd he go? And there's the first missed free throw by the Volunteers. Had to happen sometime. 20 out of 21 right now. And now you look at the score where it's at. Two-point lead for Tennessee. There's eight minutes left to go in this game, and there's already seven personal fouls. Where has Tennessee found its easiest scoring opportunities? Right where they're at right now. So you've got to keep driving. You've got to keep attacking if you're Tennessee and trying to get into the body of Kentucky players. Hub's got the second. It's the biggest lead of the night for the Volunteers. Eulis is on the bench because we've got a TV time out coming up, and John Calipari wanted to give him a little extra breather. Depends on how long we go before that next whistle, though, to see how much time he does get. Missed jumper, Moore with a rebound. Tennessee bringing it down with a three-point cushion. And one of the things Tennessee's done a better job of is trying to limit the second-chance point opportunities for Kentucky. A lot of one shots and then done for the Wildcats here in the second half. Kentucky leads the conference in second chance points at just under 15 a game. Briscoe, the kick out to Hawkins. He missed a three. Ball hits the deck. Armani Moore with a loose ball rebound. And on a runner and a drive by Shambari Phillips. Isaiah Briscoe was in position, but remember, he's got four personal fouls. He bailed out and gave the lane. It's an 8-0 run for Tennessee. And as you saw, Kentucky's over five minutes without a field goal. Boy, do they need one right now. They trail by five. Murray trying to get him a triple. Got it. Huge shot by Jamal Murray. Why, it's everybody down. They got to get a figure out how to get a stop down here, though. Rick Barnes is going to take a timeout. Well, Tennessee's done a nice job aggressively attacking, especially here in the second half against Kentucky. They got the defensive rebound in the open floor. Briscoe in position, bails out. Phillips able to finish. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Hotels.com. The obvious choice for hotels. And in part by Universal Pictures presenting Hail Caesar, a new film from the Coen brothers in theaters Friday. Normally people wear pants. Yeah, that's why I'm hiding, Captain Obvious. Not very well. I found you immediately. You know what else is easy to find? A new hotel with the Hotels.com app. I don't need a new hotel room. I just need to get back into this one. Gary? It's Wednesday, Gary. I know that, Janet. Hotels.com is more helpful than Janet. All-new Civic from Honda. Would the Detroit system? Would the Detroit Just keep still. From Joel and Ethan Cohen, creators of The Big Lebowski, Fargo, and True Grit, comes the most entertaining. Good stuff. Damn it! All-star movie of the year. Still <laughs> <laughs> <No> laughing. <laughs> But seriously, Hail Caesar, rated PG-13.
Tennessee and cut the lead at halftime down to six. Came out of the locker room the first four minutes of the second half belonged to them. They've been on a tear ever since, doing it in a variety of ways. Driving John Calipari nuts, as well as their fans at Thompson Bowling Arena. And right now, they lead by two in a series that goes all the way back 116 years. Kentucky has won eight of the last nine. First meeting between John Calipari and Rick Barnes at SEC coaches, but they have faced each other four times. They're even there. And both teams and both coaches are going to remember this one when it's over, regardless of who wins or loses. It has turned into a great game. And it certainly wasn't in the first half if you're a Tennessee fan. Tennessee in the bonus, so you want to continue to look to be aggressive and attack. Hunter Seven. is as good a free throw shooter as there is. Ten on the shot clock. Phillips is the guy at the point right now. Got it to Moore. Five to shoot. Moore is going to have to take it on Willis. But going to be a foul, I think, called on Tyler Ulis. And it is. Boy, that was with the shot clock down to about three. And Tyler Ulis underneath and not a lot there no nope. there's not a lot there yeah there's contact but that it's called post enough meanwhile that's the first point of the wild for Kevin Putter an 82 percent free throw shooter who's six for six from the line tonight and that makes 20 points for the 16th time this season for Kevin Putter Averaging 24 in league games, 23 overall, 22 right now. And a four-point lead. 21 points. Kevin Putter, 22, beg your pardon. And there's going to be a cheap foul on the other end. And that's going to be on Phillips. And that's his fourth. Both teams are finding themselves in a little bit of foul issues right now. And two of the players out on the floor for Kentucky, Poitras and Briscoe, both with four personal fouls. And both are starters. It'll be Murray to inbound with a fresh shot clock for the Wildcats. He gets it right back and goes straight up with a three. Poitras keeps it alive for him. Top with Briscoe and Rory and Eulis, and it's Briscoe going to the rack. And he drew a foul. And they're going to call it because it went off the glass first. Briscoe, nice job driving in. And as he drives in, the ball hits the glass first. So once the ball has hit the glass, you've got to allow it to let go. That didn't happen. That's why they count the basket, and it's opportunity for a three point play. So Briscoe gets two and one. Well, so much has been made about Isaiah Briscoe at the free throw line. In his previous two games, he's shooting 61% from the free throw line. Overall, though, not so much. Well, in the previous six games before that, just 21%. <laughs> so, no, but he is much improved over the last two games from the free throw line. Missed that one. Scramble for the loose ball rebound. One by Tennessee. Carter rimmed out. The jumper kept alive, though, by Hubs again. Hey, well, Hubs didn't start the game, but he's been a big contributor here in the last five minutes or so. And now Eulis with a steal. And Armani Moore with the foul. Tyler Eulis once again being posted up down low on the block. You're going to see him in this portion of your screen. Watch the way he comes out and cheats. So he's fighting for position underneath, very similar to that previous possession. And on the pass, he releases contact and is able to play the passing lane and then draw the foul to get to the free throw line. Where he's almost automatic. 19 points for Tyler. Schofield comes back in. Got them both. Fifth straight game for Tyler Eulis to go over 20 points. It's his 10th overall on the season. Tennessee almost threw it away again. That 
is a big foul on Marcus Lee as he swats the ball and the shooter's arms halfway into the stands. They extend all the way out defensively as it was that near turnover at midcourt and actually benefited Tennessee because of how much it opened up the floor. So the officials over there at the scorer's table. On the drive. It's a hard foul. Honestly, that's, that's a good foul. He just raked him across the arms. That's what you're supposed to do on a drive. No contact made to the head. I mean, ideally, you rotate over defensively, and you, you play that a little bit better considering where that drive started. Uh, but outside of that, I mean, that's just a, that's just a good basketball foul to make sure that the player doesn't get an opportunity for a three-point play and will have to earn it at the free throw line. Two shots coming up. Officials Carl Hess, Ron Groover, Keith Kimball had a little conference over there and said basically uh, what Sean said, just a hard foul. Free throw line coming up. Hobbs is the only volunteer to miss a free throw tonight. One for two from the stripe. Right now locked in our third tie of the game. Missed another one. Poitras comes back in playing with four fouls. Marcus Lee goes out. You mentioned his struggles against TCU. Just one of seven from the field. Two points, four fouls in 21 minutes. Got the second of two. Five-minute mark, Tennessee by one. Here's Poitras going baseline against Schofield. Lost it out of bounds. It's exactly where they wanted to get the ball down low to Alex Poitras to rip through, and he just lost control of the ball, dribbled it right off of his knee, and stunned frustration from Coach Calipari. Again, they're going to try a little backcourt pressure. Didn't seem to affect Tennessee the last time, and now they've got it in the guy's hands that they want in putter. They're going to take it to the rack in a hurry. What a up and under by Mostella. There's that vertical you were talking about earlier. How about that hang time? Briscoe lost it in the paint. Back-to-back -back Kentucky turnovers. Putter, three. Got it! one point in time, Kentucky was up 21. Now with just over four minutes left to go, back-to-back -back turnovers have led to run out Kevin Punter. It's good. If you're trying to be a little better, things just got a whole lot better. Introducing entrees loaded with flavor, not calories. Applebee's Grill and Bar favorites made a little better for you. Featuring new dishes all under 650 calories and starting at just $9.99. It seems like every financial company talks about investing your way to wealth. But what about protecting what you're building right now? At Northwestern Mutual, we know the importance of doing both. We combine personalized investment solutions that help grow your wealth with world-class insurance that protects what matters most to you. This whole picture approach is just one of the reasons 96% of our clients stay with us year after year. At Northwestern Mutual, we help you live life differently. Hell of a presidential race, sir. Every day the same damn joke. Seriously? Welcome to London, Mr. President. Get down! We're going to get up the president and stream it live. If it comes to it, I want you to kill me. That's an order. Oh, my God. We'll get you out of here. They don't know who they're messing with, do they? That's the way I like it. Stay with me. London has fallen. In theaters March 4th. Indulgence no longer comes at a price. 
Well, actually it does, but it's just $9.99. New Hot Shot Whiskey Chicken, Applebee's Grill and Bar favorites made a little better for you. Featuring new dishes loaded with flavor in all under 650 calories. For one moment in time, we were the best. I know what he did for me. That's why I love Buddy Ryan. We looked at each other in the huddle and said, OK, it's showtime. We dominate the game. Well, after 30 years, they're still talking about us being the best. What if I told you it's not bragging if it's true? ESPN Films presents a 30 for 30 film brought to you by Volkswagen. The 85 Bears, Thursday at 9 on ESPN. Biggest lead of the night for Tennessee, up six with 4.17 remaining. And Kevin Potter has been sensational in both halves, 12 in the first, 12 in the second. And you just see the variety of ways that he can score. Going to the basket, stepping out beyond the three-point arc. He is two for four from deep. But 12 points, as you mentioned, this one was the final one right before we went to the timeout. What has helped Kevin Potter's game, though, Brad, is that he hasn't had to do it all by himself. So often this season, he's been their lone scorer, but Armani Moore with 17, Mostello with 13, Schofield with 11. Four guys in double figures. Takes a little bit of pressure and helps open up the floor for Kevin Punter. Kentucky, likewise, with four players in doubles, led by the guy that's got the ball right now, Tyler Ewis to 20. Weaving in and out of traffic at the four-minute mark. Ulis going to put up a three. Rebound off to Murray and a fresh shot clock for the Wildcats. Now it's Ulis on the drive. Poitras trying to throw it back up there and Armani Moore's got another rebound. I thought there was contact underneath that time. Pulling Alex Poitras to the ground. Nothing was called. Armani Moore with 10 rebounds to go with his 17 points. Here he is on the drive. And he's going to the free throw line. Right now, the volunteers are wired, and so is their head coach. Okay, guys, now look, I want you guys excited, but we haven't done anything yet. All we've done is come back and put ourselves in a position to win it. If you want to get really excited, you got to finish this thing. That's what they're trying to do with 327 to go as Poitras is fouled out. 14 points, five rebounds for Alex tonight. go back to that game against Kansas foul out issues down the stretch they had four of them for Kentucky back to back games that Alex Poitras has fouled out of Armani Moore will go to the free throw line where he is six for six tonight and with that foul Tennessee goes in the double bonus which means they will shoot two the rest of the way anytime there's contact. What a night for the senior out of Kennesaw, Georgia. 18 points, 10 rebounds. That's his third double-double of the season. Second one off the mark as Murray pulls down the miss. 77-70, loose ball, Tennessee hustles for it. And they were on the baseline, but great individual effort by Schofield down there to try to save it. Selling out for the ball. Selling out to try to gain possession of the basketball when you have a seven-point lead. That's the scratching, the clawing that Tennessee has done for a majority of the second half that has put them in this position. Murray. Driving on Moore and drawing the foul. That's four on Armani Moore. They were early to start the second half. They did a great job, Kentucky did, of getting points in the paint. Ten out of their first 12 points in the second half came in the paint. Then they hit those back-to-back -back threes to answer the first original lead for Tennessee. They have not gotten many looks, though, in transition. Everything's had to be in their half-court set, right. and Tennessee has done a superb job of packing in the paint. The freshman calmly knocks down the first free throw. 17 for Jamal, which is on his average. 
17.4 coming in, which is fifth in the conference. This will put him just a shade over his average if he hits this one and does. 18. And a lead down to five with three to go. Get the baseline jumper, and Willis got the rebound. You see defensively good awareness and good transition that time for Tennessee. Murray thinking about a three. There goes the long one in and out. Schofield off the glass. hands for the jumper good positioning on the rebound for Willis Eulis leaves it for Briscoe with a left hand in and out but tipped back in by Lee that's a first basket for Marcus Lee a beautiful drop off pass there by Eulis to Murray unable to finish but Marcus Lee that time did what he didn't do about three minutes ago and that's get the offensive rebound secured and be able to finish it Tennessee takes a timeout. Tyler Eulis attacking in the open floor, turns the corner. The defense pinches in. A good look for Briscoe, unable to finish, but a nice job by Marcus Lee to be active on the glass. Now we're in the SEC here in game one of Super Tuesday. We're going to go to the ACC on Saturday, 2 o'clock Eastern. North Carolina State and Duke will square off. Then at 7 o'clock, Bryce Johnson and number two North Carolina taking on Notre Dame. Also streaming live on Watch ESPN and the ESPN app. Brad Nestle, Sean Farnham, Shannon Spake, and our ESPN crew here on Super Tuesday in Knoxville, Tennessee at Thompson Bowling Arena. Kentucky coming off a loss in overtime to Kansas. Tennessee coming off a disappointing one against TCU in the Big 12 SEC Challenge when they led by 14 at halftime. Tonight they were down. 21 in the first half, cut it to six by the break, and have led by as many as seven here in the second half. You see there, that was against a Rick Barnes Texas team. <laughs> Rick Barnes trying to be on the other end of it. I mean, when it was 21, I mean, everything was moving. We talked about what we wanted to see out of Kentucky as far as the mental strength and focus coming out of the gates here on the road. They showed it early, but you've got to credit Tennessee and their competitiveness and it's what Rick Barnes has been challenging his team on all night long. Every time we do a wired segment, is he talking about specific plays? Is he talking about putting somebody in the right position on the floor or saying, guys, we just have to compete, turn it up, turn it up, keep going, keep going, because that's where they, they dropped off on their game on Saturday against TCU. They put it in cruise control in the second half. They failed to score and they allowed TCU to find a rhythm. Uh, they'll try to regain their rhythm after that timeout and hope Kentucky doesn't find its rhythm. On the floor right now, more hugs. This is Hunter along with Mostella. Let's go field. Arani Moore driving. Rejected by Marcus Lee with 11 on the shot clock and 134 to go. Great job rotating over from the help side position. Willis did an excellent job not reaching his arms in, and that's what allowed the time for Marcus Lee to rotate over and finish. The feed inside to Hubs. Didn't look like Hunter was going to find somebody to get it to, and finally Hubs found a crease in a 79-74. Eulis fouled in the lane. Awareness on the out of bounds. This is the guy that you got to watch. He's right there. And Jamal Murray gets caught looking at the ball. And when you look at the ball, you lose sight of your man. And when you lose sight of your man, that's what happens. You give up two. A couple of times tonight, Kentucky has broken down at the defensive end of the floor. We showed you on the three by Mostella. 
where Tyler Eulis lost him because he was yeah. watching the ball. That time, Jamal Murray on the out of bounds underneath. He turned and watched the ball when it's dead ball out of bounds, and that's what gave up the lane. And Tyler Eulis misses his second free throw of the night when they desperately needed it. Lead remains five for Tennessee. Comes a double team on punter. Gets it down in the corner. Schofield goes straight up with it. A minute left, and Armani Moore with another rebound. Just effort play. Wanting the ball more. Tracking it down. He's got 12 rebounds. None may be bigger than that one. John Calipari again says, get some double teams out here. Clock is winding down. 40 to play, 12 on the shot clock. There comes Murray on a run by. And a foul. Will be on Ulis. And out of crowd of Thompson Bowling can smell it. You know, little tiny breakdowns that we've seen down the stretch of this game. Marcus Lee a couple times, not getting that offensive rebound, that defensive rebound on that possession, missing the offensive rebound at one end. Alex Poitras dribbling it off of his knee. Ball watching at the defensive end at least twice in the second half. When you travel on the road, in particular this year in college basketball, this is not abnormal. This has become the norm of what we see across the country. Putter missed a free throw. But he gets another one. There's the double bonus. He had been seven for seven from the line. He is averaging 24 points per game in SEC action, which is where he is right now. Number two in the conference is Stefan Moody as the overall scoring lead. He got the second one, 25. And it's a six-point lead. Todd running out on the catch. Eulis to kick out. Murray in the corner. What a three-pointer by Murray. And it cuts the lead at half. Timeout, Kentucky. Great execution. A called play from Coach Calipari that was set up. The drive baseline. The defense completely collapses. And they leave Jamal Murray wide open from the outside. As he hits the deck, the ball hits the bottom of the net. With Tyler Eulis. Almost out of bounds. Looked like he got rid of that pass as his foot was stepping on the baseline. Remember, Jamal Murray just one of six in the first half. Second half, he has turned it up. He's gotten aggressive at the start of it, attacking, getting his feet on balance. And that kind of got him going in a rhythm. A little step back, creating space. But that last three-point shot that he had right there, so huge and pivotal in this moment. The missed free throw by Kevin Punter opens up the door of opportunity. It's down to three. And now you're going to look to steal immediately on the inbounds pass. But if you don't, you got to foul quickly. Elongate out this game. If you heard all that noise, it's because the replay, the Tennessee fans did not agree that Tyler Eulis didn't step on the baseline before he delivered that pass. And thus the eruption you heard behind us as we get another look at it. His right foot, as the ball is leaving his hand, it is out. His foot is down. It's a bang-bang play. His foot may not be down at that point. We can't tell. But it was that close. It's as close as it comes. But now you've got to be really aggressive here. If you're Kentucky, you're going to try to trap immediately, get a deflection or a steal if you can get the ball, get to the ball first. Basically, they don't have any bad free throw shooters on the floor right now, at least not tonight. The way they've been hitting shots, so they immediately foul Hubs. He is the guy that's missed two of the four that they have missed tonight. So they play the percentages, and that worked out for him pretty well. The defense for offense substitution. Remember, Briscoe's got four fouls, so he went to the bench. Matthews came in for him. Hawkins came in for Eulis. Robert Hubbs didn't start the game tonight because of his performance against TCU. He has come out and played with 
Some serious intensity, especially in the second half. Three out of five from the stripe. Got them both. Still two possession game with less than 30 to go. Euless bleeds it for all it's worth before he picks up the ball. Murray looking for a three. Willis had his hands on the rebound. Lee comes up with it. Now Murray, another one. Briscoe up, and he missed. Three times Kentucky with a chance. Three times they come away empty. 9.9 to play, and it's volunteer ball. Five-point lead, just under 10 to go as we check in with Carl Ravich in the studio. All right, great stuff there, Brad. We'll watch the last nine seconds unfold in a moment. Want to remind everybody, now on ESPN3 and soon to be seen right here on ESPN, Indiana and John Beeline and Michigan. 2-2, they are underway. So you can see it on ESPN3. The conclusion of our game, though, Kentucky and Tennessee. Brad, John, back to you guys. All right, Carl, everybody standing at Thompson Bowling Arena. May not have been a sellout tonight, but if this lead holds, about 22,000 people are going to say they were here. This would be the biggest win in year one for Rick Barnes. And it would snap a two-game winning streak in the series that goes back a long, long ways. This is a 219th time these two teams have gotten together. That's the oldest rivalry or the oldest matchup in the Southeastern Conference. It'll be one that people will remember for a long time if indeed Tennessee pulls off the upset here. Tennessee had lost eight out of its last nine meetings. Well documented Kentucky struggles in true road games this year, just two and four. Armani Morty inbound. Got it into Hubs. He hit his last two shots. They're going to have to foul somebody. And they finally foul Painter. Euless has to do it with six seconds to go. That'll be it for Tyler Euless. It'll be the second starter to foul out for Kentucky. He leaves with 20 points and five assists. That's about what uh, his average is right now over the last six, seven games. Kevin Putter now 25 points to the line to try to ice things. Got that one. Two possession game right now. It won't be in a second if he hits his next free throw. Got them both. Final seconds. First game in the series was 116 years ago this Friday. They'll talk about this one for another 116 years. Tennessee, the upset, 84-77. For Coach Rick Barnes and the Tennessee Volunteers, the effort they put forth in the second half, the competitiveness, the fire, they didn't give up. They could have folded up their tent when they were down 21. Instead, they responded and seized control. From 21 down in the half, six down at halftime. An 84-77 stunner over number 20, Kentucky. Next up, Super Tuesday continues, Indiana and Michigan. For Sean and Shannon, Brad Nessler, good night from Knoxville. Down to Mike Tirico.